so uh, we're getting ready to fill up our cannon jars. A um, couple things you do want to have, especially one thing you really want to have is uh, these tongs, I guess you'd call them. Um, reach down in once they're done. You can pick them up out of your um, canner when they're hot like that. You can use a hot pad, but it's a lot easier and better to use one of these. Not that expensive. Um, next thing you want, which you don't have to use, but it beats kind of chasing them around in the hot water and stuff, is one of these things. It's a little piece of plastic lid grabber. It has a um, magnet in the end of it. You can just reach down in there, pick up a lid, pull it out, put it on. After you wipe it off, put it on there, you're good to go. So it's easier than chasing around with a fork or sticking your sticking your fingers in hot water. water. <laughs> yeah. Like that. So, um, what you want to do first off is uh, get your get your can or your jar. Here, move some of these so you can see what's going on. Um, <clears throat> you want to take a tablespoon or a teaspoon, a teaspoon of salt, and put in there, right like that. We now, use sea salt. Yeah, we use the, the sea salt in there. Now I'm going to do the cubed first here. Um, oh, there, I lost a piece already. <laughs> This is something you should teach your children. This is something that, as you can see, both men and women can do this. Um, you know, it doesn't go against any rules if a man's do doing it. Manly men don't do this. Are you kidding? Oh, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> you decide. <laughs> don't let him kid you. You're really not seeing him do this. <laughs> but definitely, this is a skill that you want to you wanna have. Um, you want to fill these about... You don't want to pack them real tight. Um, you can pack them down a little bit, but you don't want to go too crazy. Um, I lost another piece. You're fired. Wheat. <laughs> and you want it about an inch from the top of your jar. Come on, go there. Um, you want your meat roughly from the top here. You want about an inch down in there. Uh, you don't want to go any more than that because of the expansion of your juices and all that good stuff. Um, all yeah. right, so the other reason for that too is um, it it'll form pressure while it's canning, and if you don't have enough room there, there won't be enough air or, or space in there for the seal to act, actually suck tight. So that's something else you want to remember. It's it, there is definitely meaning behind that. Yeah. So that's something else. Right. So you reach in here, grab one of your Excuse me, grab one of your uh, lids, take it, shake it off, and then you want to wipe the lid off that seal. You want to clean the water off of that or it won't seal for you on the top. You want to clean that off and wipe the top of your jar off so there's no nothing on there, no moisture, no nothing. Put that on there. Take this, your ring, tighten her down. That's ready to go in the canner. So we'll just take this, take it over here, stick it in there right away. Now and, we're gonna... and keep in mind, we didn't put any juices in there. A lot of things you can do require you to have juices in there, but meats are something you do not have to put um, liquid in with um, because they will create their own juices. So that's how we did the venison last year. Oh, and I want to mention... Last year when we did the venison, we put garlic um, cloves in each of the jars, and we put garlic powder in as well. We, we, can you tell we like garlic? However, don't do that, because as it sits on the shelf, that gets stronger and stronger. Um, we eat garlic in every meal that we eat, but it got, it got too strong, and it, it, it wasn't tasty anymore. So don't season your foods, your meats, in the, while you're canning it. Season it after you take it out of the jars yeah, when you're going to eat it. Cook it or eat it. or, And that's the nice thing about the uh, doing your meat like this, too. You know, if you freeze it, 
you gotta take it out, let it thaw, cut it up, or whatever, then cook it up. This stuff, it doesn't matter, deer meat, elk, moose, whatever, chicken. chicken. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter. You can take this stuff right off the shelf, open up the jar, and just start eating it. So, mm -hmm. it kind of makes it nice, too. Very, very, very nice. What we're doing now, we've got these strips. Put some strips in there. Um, Did you wash your hands? Maybe. <laughs> this will be your jar. <laughs> and those are great for sandwiches. You know, you can pull a slab out of there and put it on a sandwich. You know, whatever you want to do with them. It just makes it convenient. Strips or yeah. whatever you want to, want to do. top of your lid clean that wipe that off any moisture on there wipe that off grab your uh, lid from out of your hot water wipe it down it said you don't want any water on that seal or it won't seal and wipe that off that on there. Tighten her down. Voila. Ready to go in the canner. Dun, dun, dun. Now I'm going to do a blog post on this also to go along with this. And, I, and I, that's what I'm going to do is in the video notes, I'm going to put the link to our blog post. So you can go in there and get all the information and links to things that we've talked about. I'll put links to all these um, items that you should have. I'll put a link to our canner that we purchased and um, links to some other ones that are out there. Uh, but that way you have all the information at one place and uh, you can find everything. But we're going to jump off of here. Um, I think you get the idea on how to you know, take care of getting your food into the jar. Um, and we're going to get this canner going. When I start doing the uh, working with the canner, I will um, pop back on and show you that process. So uh, just stay tuned and hang in there. Okay guys, there's all seven jars in the canner. Now, I want to mention something. Sometimes when you get to the end of whatever you're canning, you may not have a full seven to put in. That's okay. Um, you can still put them in there. Um, they'll be fine. Uh, just place them in there. Um, like if you had five, I would put them in just like they are here and leave the two the, the two here, that space there empty. Um, but I'm going to put the lid on here and get this baby going and I will show you uh, a little bit further in just a second. Okay, now, like the Mountain Man mentioned, um, this is on. I've got it on full bore, so it's heating these jars up. And like I said, the water's cold, the jars are cold, the chicken's cold, so it's just all heating up at the same time. So now it's just a waiting game until we have steam coming out of this hole here. And it'll start to hiss, but you'll see more of the steam. Sometimes um, the steam will start appearing uh, and you don't hear it. So just pay attention. Just keep an eye out. Now, you don't start counting your cooking time until this gauge is where it is supposed to be. Now, for us, due to our elevation, it should be a pressure of 12, so it's going to be like right in here, closer to the 10, um, is where we want that gauge to go to. to the 10. Yes, it is. Thank you very much, smarty pants. Um, <laughs> anyway, once that hits the 12 and where it needs to be, um, that's when you start counting your cooking time, which will be 90 minutes per canner. So it does take, it's a little time consuming. And like I said, you don't want to go far, like you don't want to head outside or you don't want to head, you know, to a bunch of rooms away that you're not going to be able to hear this thing because you do need to pay attention to it. But I'm going to be here in the kitchen doing elderberries, which will be our next video, and or I may be at the table, you know, doing some writing. But either way, I'm close by, you know, what I usually do is find something that I can do 
tasks, other tasks that I can do in the same vicinity that day when I'm planning to can. So just, you know, strategically plan things. That's what we try to do here. Otherwise, we don't get anything done. So I'm going to let that go. I will jump back on and show you what it looks like and how it sounds and all that good stuff. And at this point, the mountain man is still putting chicken in the jars and getting them ready for the next canner. So we will have two going side by side, which makes it really efficient. Um, we will probably get... Um, probably 28 quarts, roughly. Um, we'll see what we end up with, but it's a nice amount of chicken. little uh, suggestion, too, on your, this got a little full, on, uh, on your, when you're putting, cutting up your chicken and stuff, some people cut the, the skin. And the fat. And the fat off. Mm -hmm. That's what makes your broth. Like, if you're making chicken soup and stuff like that, that, that's what makes your broth. You want that in there. Um, that's where your all your good stuff comes from. Yeah, that's um, why we chose to keep it in our jars because that's going to flavor our meats. Um, you know, if you open a can of chicken from the grocery store, you're going to see that kind of fat in there too. That's you know. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, true. True. And this way, at least we know where our chicken came from. We know that it's healthy. We know. Okay, guys, we're back on here, and you can see the steam coming out of the hole there. I'm going to put this chigger on there. Now you heard that sound, so um, it's going to make that noise when you put it on there. It's not a big deal, and it's going to take a little while. Now you can see, I wanted to show them that. See how this starts spitting water, and, it, and it, it's slightly popping up. This is something that's going to pop up completely when there's enough pressure. Something that happens is the water keeps it from popping up so what we do is we wipe around that area but you don't want to push that down no but you want to wipe around it and and it will and sometimes you can actually go across it and it'll it'll help it to pop it up because you want that popped up because that also indicates that you're getting full pressure in your in your canner that will remain popped up through the process so we'll just kind of keep an eye on that so I can show you what it does. You can hear it hissing. You can hear the water boiling in the canner. There it's Shit. starting to go up. Sometimes I'll just mess with it and then it'll just pop up. And it just kind of... Sort of gets... It seems to me like it gets stuck, so I just kind of help it along. <laughs> it, oh, it's almost up. <laughs> it's starting. I'll just wait a little bit here. It'll go. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so close. <laughs> now maybe. That's probably been boiling for what? I'd say 15 minutes? Yeah, something like that. We lose tra track of time out here and uh, we're convinced that Idaho has uh, a warp time zone because it, it just seems to super fly by. That's some good English. Super fly by. It flies by super fast. And I'm an English teacher. <laughs> hey, I'm allowed to be tongue tied every once in a while. Moving at the pace we do, it's amazing I can even speak right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's starting there. It's, there there it go. goes. Dun, dun, yeah. da. Messing Spoke with you. too soon. Mm -hmm. Dang Murphy. <laughs> It'll go. <laughs> but I want to be able to show you this so you can see what happens. Because once that pops up, then your gauge is going to start moving. And it's not going to move fast. There, there, it goes. Dun, there it goes. Okay, so now your hissing has stopped. You can hear that. And now um, we'll just keep a little an eye for a little bit here on the gauge. You do this. You want to wipe this little bit of water off of the top. Don't push that down. Right. Make sure that don't get pushed back down. I don't think you'll be able to actually, because now the pressure's in there no, to such a degree yeah, that it'll. It's still... 
I've never tried. I've always been excited when it is done its deal there so that we can move along. Okay, so now let's see if that gauge starts moving here for us. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it's going to take a little bit. But that's what you want to start looking for is your gauge to start moving. And you want to, you know, coordinate your, you know, double check in your, in your canning manual um, what your pressure needs to be for whatever it is that you're canning. And if you're not sure, go ask Sharon. She's She's amazing. Um, also, the ball canning books are really awesome to have on hand. I have Sharon's canning books on hand. I have the ball canning books on hand. And another friend of mine, thecanningdiva.com, um, she has some really cool canning products. And she also does some really cool stuff on her website as well. But I want to shortchange her. She does a lot of meals in jars um, versus individual uh, canning of individual things so um, check her out too um, she does all kinds of stuff she's 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 really cool too so um, this is not moving yet but um, should be soon and I'm gonna jump off of here instead of boring you to death staring at this gauge um, we're now at the point where it's gonna start to do its thing and I'll jump back on once that moves and uh, uh, continue to share the process with you so stay tuned Okay guys, this one here is going up. You can see the pressure moving. Now, um, I did not turn the burner down. It is still on full and uh, trying to get that up to um, the pressure we want it to be and then I'll start messing with the uh, uh, temperature. Um, over here, uh, that one just popped up. So um, that one is just starting the process here. It's a little bit behind the other one. Were you gonna say something? No, I was just saying we just stuck the, yeah. just now stuck the top on. Top on there. So these are gonna, this needs to get up to 12, and when it gets to 12, I'll jump back on here, and um, share a little more with you. Uh, and then we have 90 minutes to wait. Um, so I'm, and during that process, if there's anything that I want to show you, I'll jump back on. But otherwise, we'll jump back on at the end of the 90 minutes and show you the finished deal and finish this video and. Um, I just hope that this encourages you to embrace a pressure canner and a pressure cooker because these are not near as scary as they seem. The old ones look really something. They look like uh, the aliens left them behind or something. <laughs> but it's, not, it's nothing to be scared of. It's something that can be really valuable to your self-sustaining lifestyle if that's what you're shooting for. So um, did you have something else you wanted to add? Yeah. Okay. And we're going to jump off of here, and we'll catch you guys in a bit. Okay, guys. Um, this is now where it needs to be. It's a little high, but not, not too bad. Um, but we really had to regulate the uh, temperature, and you'll see in a second. This is on my absolute lowest setting. There's barely, you know, barely any flame coming out of there. Now, this other one you'll see has quite a bit more flame on it. And this one, try not to give you motion sickness here. Now that one's getting high, so I need to turn that down a little bit and bring that back down to 12. So you just need to keep an eye on it. Um, most likely, um, my one here on the left should be good now for the duration, but it, you still need to watch it. On occasion, you even need to turn it down just a touch more. Um, which is nearly next to nothing. But this is good now. It's gonna um, it's now being timed. So ninety minutes or hour and a half. And then we will have our chicken completely ready to put on the shelf. And I'll share with you how we go about that too. because um, it's good to let your jars sit. Uh, we get them out. Actually we put them in the uh, case boxes that our jars came in. Uh, they're just easy to transport down onto our shelves and um, and that way they're insulated against whatever they're sitting on, whether it's the counter or the floor. And uh, we just let them set overnight. And then I'll explain more um, 
when we get there. So um, we'll jump back on. Okay, guys, I just turned off the burner here. Um, this has been cooking now um, for 90 minutes. So chicken is finished. And now what you need to do is let this, both these canners are going to need to um, basically decompress on their own. Um, it's not good to try to speed up the process because heavy duty or fast pressure changes in these can cause the jars to burst and crack and all that good stuff. So what you want to do is just let it be. Um, you turn it off and you let it um, slowly lose the air and um, come back in probably about 20 minutes and just check it and once all the um, valves like this one this valve here will actually go down and um, you'll be able to tell that the uh, pressure has left and you can then remove this cap over here um, if it's still hissing quickly put it back on and let it do its thing um, but once um, you can remove that cap and there's no more uh, pressure coming out of that vent then you're safe to take the lid off uh, be careful when you do so though it's still going to be full of steam um, so you just want to be careful because you can really get uh, bad burns from the steam. And um, and then you can remove the jars using this tool here. Um, it's so much easier having one of those like um, the mountain man said. It's so much nicer as well. just uh, makes it easier. So um, they're easy to find at the thrift stores. So are these magnetic pieces. And again, I will have all that information in the post on this um, but I'm going to spin this camera around here for a second. So we figured we'd jump back on here and just finish up this video. And thank you for joining us. And uh, stay tuned. We'll have a whole lot more coming your way. Um, Mountain Man will be uh, talking about his big project. And um, it's got a lot of things in store for you and so do uh, myself and the mountain boy so um, <clears throat> if you have any questions don't ever hesitate to contact us you can reach us at survive at treyerwilderness.com and um, be sure to get on our website at treyerwilderness.com subscribe to our weekly newsletter um, join us on the different social media networks you can find that all on the right hand side of our website and uh, lots of giveaways going on right now so be sure to get involved in those also and uh just thanks so much for joining us. Thank you much. Appreciate it. Till till the next video. You guys take care and God bless. God bless.